welcome to our June edition of Sports Highlights, June 2022, and congratulations to all the graduates of all the Newport News schools. This is Sports Highlights back in the studio this month. Our program is on TV and online. It airs on TV on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m. on Cox Cable 47, 517, all over social media and YouTube as well. Greg Bicaveras, glad you're with us. Our guests for June are Raven Blair, the head softball coach at Warwick High School, and Bob Manners, who's the Aquatics Manager, Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services in the city of Hampton. Raven, we'll start off with you. Good to see you and uh, Woodside graduate. So you've been involved yes, in Newport News and softball for a while. Yes, sir, I have, and thank you for having me. Um, I've been playing softball since I was four. Um, I came from Georgia and I came here. Um, when I came here, I was like six, six years old. So I've been playing softball in the 7-5 for a good 12 years. How did you get involved in softball? Um, I could say my dad, he coached me. My dad was my coach since I grew up. Um, I also had a good, another coach, Coach uh, Chuck Williams. He was my t-ball coach all the way up to high school. I played AAU ball, same coach, Chuck Williams. Um, also, Mike Talon, uh, Michael Talon, he was my softball coach for um, high school. And he also did a little bit of travel ball, AAU ball. And um, I also did two years of collegiate ball, too. Well, let's talk about, you mentioned the T-ball. Let's talk about the different balls, first of all. T-ball is a little bit of a softer texture. Softball is bigger than a baseball, but right. it's also a little bit easier to hit because you can see it better. Right. Talk about the different textures of the balls. Um, the different textures. So we have a, a lot of different textures of softball. Um, we have a pitching machine ball, the dimple ball, that's strictly just for practice. Uh, the tee ball is, yes, it's softer. A lot smaller, I believe it's the 8 inch, uh, 12, 12 inches, the varsity level, um, 12 and up, 12 U ball. Uh, that's tend to be yellow, and it's tend to be the original size that you use from 12 and up. No, the dimples have little dimples in them. Yeah, they have little dimple balls. They come off pretty fast, spin right. on the ground different ways to be de defensively ready. All right, so the whole point is you don't need a whole lot of equipment to play softball. You need a, a bat, of course, and you know need some protective gear if you're the catcher. So let's talk about your second year. How has the season gone? Um, it's very different than last year. We had plenty, a lot of girls. Um, the beginning of the season, I did coach. Uh, I was the coach of JV and varsity, so I was coaching about 32 girls for a good strong four weeks. Um, the biggest thing that everybody came out, last year we only had straight nine. So if one was hurt, it was no game. Uh, two was hurt, really not no practice, but a lot of things things turned around from the group of girls and coming out to actually know that you're having a softball team at your high school. Cause and it's really great too, because you right. know we're two years past COVID, but you're outdoors in the fresh air. Right, COVID so, hit, that was bad. Yeah, so they're a lot more confident playing outdoors. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the different skilled players on the team. Who has really stood out this year? Um, I could tell you all the girls really stood out this year. Um, people who've never played before, they're, they're out here hitting the balls in the green, in the grass. Um, there's some girls who never still haven't played before, catching balls, making impossible plays. So. Um, I can say the experienced girls, you know, they're good. They they still need help with uh, fundamental softball. We start from the ground up and work up. Um, yeah. yeah. So. And not to mention, too, you went to Woodside High School. So you didn't graduate that long ago, just a few years ago. Yes, sir. So a lot of these seniors were freshmen when you were in school, correct? Right. You graduated in 2019. Yes, sir. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever play against any of your players? Um, last year, yes. Some of some players I have played with, um, some recognize me. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, varsity softball coaches still be like, oh, Blair, that's you. So, yeah. Yeah. Still excellent. a little young. They call you Raven and they call you Blair both, yeah. right? So you have two <laughs> first names, but very nice. Thank you. We're here with Raven Blair. She's the head softball coach at Warwick High School. So you have a lot on your plate when you're managing a game. you got to see whether the pitcher's tired, see how their arm is. Right. You know, you can read girls pretty well because, you know, you don't know what happened before they got on the field, right. what kind of day they had in school. So there's a lot going on. Yes, there it is. Um, so... I actually uh, open up the girls, I get them ready and get them dressed. Um, after that, we all meet, no no wandering around. I want you to have the same mindset as if when you see me and when you leave me. So uh, we open up and we also talk about how your day is. How is your, how's your day? You got anything you need to let out, let it out, let me know. You don't want to talk about it face to face, you can also record yourself and send it to me later that night. Just so you can get stuff off your chest because softball is a 90% mental, baseball too, 90% mental game, 10% fundamental. You don't have to know you don't have to know how to run, but you definitely know the game to be on the field. 
Now, do you girls travel together on the road trips? Technically, when you go to Menchville or go to Heritage, I mean, those are closer trips than be. But Woods, when you start going to Woodside, your your alma mater, or start going to Gloucester, right. or going to Bethel and Hampton, you have a lot of time to think before you get on the field, correct? Yes, we do. Um, well, we think on the bus. So when you get to school, that's if you had a bad day at school, we leave that behind, mm -hmm. 100%. Um, once you get on the bus, you put your headphones in. There's no loud talking on the bus. I need your cleats to be on before you get on, get off the bus, before you get to the field. So we use the bathroom. We get everything squared away before, before anything, before game day, because I want you 100% focused on the yellow object, which is the ball. Yeah, the before and after can be distracting sometimes. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Talking to Raven yeah. Blair here, Greg Bickavaris, glad you're with us for our June 2020 two show hard to believe we just had our um, right. several shows we've been doing here since february of 1992 and you talk mm -hmm. about um what you're looking for for a player that's never played softball before there's a lot of its fundamentals right um the first thing i look for in a player i want you to be like uh i tend to look for naturally gifted people you know people who want to be coached people who are coachable who tend to want to listen, want to work hard, because dedication is the number one. Mm -hmm. You got to be dedicated, your parents have to be dedicated, because they got to pick you up from practice. You got to be dedicated, come on time, dedicated and loyal to your to your players and to your coach. So I teach dedication, and, and I stay on top of that a lot, because if you're not dedicated, you're not going to love what you're doing. Right, you really have to be a take charge person, because you girls are practicing in the winter time right. to start the season. Right. That's not easy. Yeah, it's not. Um, hearing about different weather, um, I have allergies. A lot of things come into play, especially when you're working with females, because you know, we tend to want to be pretty all the time and mm -hmm. keep everything up to right, but it's, it's pretty good. They're doing pretty good. I'm getting them mentally strong, mentally prepared for the real world and also the real softball world, instead of playing, you know, rec league, scrubby, scrubby ball. Right, because you're gonna get you're gonna slide into the field. You're gonna get muddy, dirty, right. and sweaty, and that's part of the grind of playing right. softball. I tell you, it seems like it's really popular. The local CNU team has done very well. Oh yeah, they really have. Um, they actually have a great coach. Uh, I was gonna go, you know, try and play for him, but it just didn't work out. And you played for Norfolk State for a while, as far as yes. going to school there. Yes, I played two years for Norfolk State. Yep, and you're trying to move on from there and just starting your own entrepreneurship, correct? Yes, um, I uh, decided. to focus on my scholars and get everything right because softball does take a lot of time and I was dedicated, I did my years, I just wanted to re retire a little bit. All right, now tell the public, this is the most intriguing question here. You play at Warwick High School as far as, you know, that's where your school is, but your games are at Little Riverside Elementary School, correct? Yes, there is. Explain how that dynamic works. Um, yeah, that, I really don't, uh, you know, agree with that, but it tends to mess with our girls' mentality. So. Everything starts there. If they feel like they're rushing to get on the bus, or if the bus not there on time, and they feel like they got to rush on the field. That's that's something that I have to also handle and control because I can't control the bus, but I can't control where our fields at either. So I have to under I have to get them to understand a lot of things aren't in my hands. So I can't control you know that we're practicing at Riverside. I do want to practice at Warwick High School softball and we're girls, but it just just not working out right there. Right, the baseball team plays at Warwick, but uh, the good yeah. thing is for the road trips. You're right there at Warwick High School, and you say you'll go to Bethel or you'll go to Hampton. So it's right. a lot easier going back and forth. Oh yeah. As far as far as road trips are concerned. Oh yeah, it's just two miles, two miles up the street. Are road games more difficult than playing at home, in general? Um, I t I can say that we do play a little different when playing at home at home mm -hmm. games. Our home games, I don't know what it is, but uh, recently we've been doing pretty good at our home games. I thought we had a little curse on our home field, but we we squashed it. We get, got it got it going. And um, the away games, uh, they tend to show out. They tend mm -hmm. to be a little bit more aggressive, and they like to wear, like, show that they're Raiders. Right. Now, um, as far as uh, the opponents, who's been the toughest opponent since you've been coaching the last two years? Toughest opponent? I could say That Bethel. you faced. Bethel? Bethel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bethel's have been a, they have very great utility players. Is that why the main reason? Yeah. They, they just got the players? Pitch, the pitching is pretty strong. Uh, they got pretty good hitters. We can, we can stick with them, but they are a pretty good team all around. Before the season starts, do you go around and ask the girls what position they're going to play, or you kind of determine that based on their skill level as far as whether you play first base, second base, or so forth? Um, if you're experienced, I'll ask you, but just because you tell me what you play doesn't mean you're guaranteed that spot. Mm -hmm. You can tell me you're, you're All-American, but that doesn't mean you're All-American in my eyes. Right. I'll make you one, but... You got to prove it. Yeah, you got to prove it that two minutes you're one. Uh, your advice you would give to a young girl out there that wants to play softball, JV and varsity, what would you tell her? 
I would tell her, don't give up. Because mm -hmm. I know it's a cliche thing that you always hear, but I think you can never give up because my coach always told me, all my coaches told me, that you're going to fail a lot when you're playing softball. You fail, you're dropping a ball, that's a failure. Swinging and missing a strike, that's a failure. Not feeling the ground ball going between your legs, that's a failure, but you still have to get up that same inning and feel that same next ball for your team and for yourself. A lot of it's in between our own ears, you right. know, and the outside noise can be a distraction. Right. Very good. Well, Raven, all the best to you. Thank you for being on our June show, and um, all the best to uh, you know work high school in your future as well in business. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Raven Blair right there, the head softball coach at Warwick High School, just finishing her second year. Stay tuned for Bob Manners as Sports Highlights continues after this. You're watching NNPS TV. Catch sports highlights on Mondays at 7, 2, and 7, and on Saturdays and Sundays at 9 a.m. Visit us online at NNPSTV.com to view all your favorite episodes. NNPS TV, watching education happen. Welcome back to our June show right here, Sports Highlights in the studio. Greg Picavera is glad you're with us and our entire crew. Hope you enjoyed Raven Blair. Let's switch gears to another great sport in the summertime, but really year-round, is water, pool, and the beach. And, of course, we're talking to Bob Manners. He is the aquatics manager, parks, recreation, and leisure services for the city of Hampton. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. How have you enjoyed being in Hampton the last several years? Uh, it's been great. Uh, great people, uh, great kid. you know, people to work with. Everything's been fantastic. Let's talk about your background a little bit. Uh, you worked in North Carolina too. Uh, I've actually worked all over the place. I worked in North Carolina. I've worked in Texas. Uh, grew up in Northern Virginia, up in Springfield, worked up there. Uh, so I've been a around a little bit. Before we talk about the beach and the pool, let's talk a little bit about lakes because I'm sure you've been around lakes as mm -hmm. well. Uh, one thing, a lake might look calm, but what's inside of the lake can be very scary. I mean like snapping turtles, mm -hmm. water moccasins. So you have to be careful of a lot of things in a lake that you wouldn't have to worry about in a beach or a pool. Yeah, you also have to worry about floating objects that are, because most of the time when they get wet, they get waterlogged, they, they're not floating on the surface of the water like logs or things like that. You also have the rocks under the water. So you got to be really, really careful uh, if you're planning on diving into a lake, uh, worry about those things as well. So it's it, that and the aquatic life, the, like you said, the snapping turtles, snakes. All kinds of fun things. Right, they have a mind of their own. And mm -hmm. of course, um, you really can't see that much in a lake too. So right. you can easily break your neck if you're not careful. Absolutely. You know, because there's really not a whole lot of lifeguards. And in some big cities, they do have lifeguards for lakes. Right. But around here, it's pretty much the beach and the rivers. Well, let's talk about um, Buckrow Beach. It's been okay. around for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had fishing piers there, good quality of life. Um, you know, not as big as Virginia Beach, but it's still a great alternative for, a lo for locals and tourists both. Let's talk about the beach. Sure. Uh, Buckrow, um, we actually do get a lot of people coming over from Virginia Beach who just don't like the, the crowds over there. Um, Buckrow Beach is almost a mile long. Uh, we do have the fishing pier at one end. We have an observation pier in the middle. Um, we have uh, a new company coming in with jet skis and paddle boards that are going to be running out for that. And um, we have, uh, there's a comfort station there. So there's, there's lots to do in the area, uh, but it's not as, quite as crowded as Virginia Beach is. 
Right. Let's talk about the lifeguards there and realize uh, how you have to train them and prep them because each year is different. Mm -hmm. Each summer is different. Um, unfortunately, drownings do happen. You guys have been pretty blessed there at Buck Row for the most part, not too many, but Virginia Beach and Nags Head have had several. They, they have, um, unfortunately. Uh, they actually, I, I know last year, Virginia Beach actually had several before Memorial Day. Uh, luckily, they did have uh, guards out there to, to before Memorial Day. Um, to help with those, but they, they have had the drownings there. Um, our guards, we've been very, very lucky. Uh, we actually had a, uh, not this past summer, but the summer before that, we actually, during the height of COVID, we actually did have 42 rescues out there. Um, t people didn't have anything to do except go to the beach. Uh, they weren't used to swimming. And so they were out at the beach and didn't really understand uh, the dangers that, are, that the beach poses. I think they tend to let their guard down, Absolutely. especially when the water is warmer in July and mm -hmm. August. And that's kind of, we're into June now. So let's talk about that. Just because the weather might be 80 degrees, the water temperature doesn't necessarily agree. Uh, absolutely. Uh, currently, I think it's probably at about 55 or 56. Uh, it won't start warming up uh, to where it's a, a comfortable temperature until about the middle of June, uh, or I'm sorry, the middle of July. Uh, but at that point, it acts, the water temperature actually attracts jellyfish. So we end up getting into a, a season where we have jellyfish in the water, which you have to watch out for. But um, all in all, it's just, you know, you don't have the huge waves usually uh, that you do in the, uh, at Virginia Beach or uh, Nags Head, uh, the Outer Banks. But um, it's just a, a great place to, to come and have fun with your family. Absolutely. It's good quality of life as we're talking to Bob. Manners, the aquatics manager. He is with the city of Hampton. This is our June edition of Sports Highlights. Glad you're with us too. And you talk about um, we live in a very distracted world where people are mm -hmm. addicted to their phones, which is good, bad, and sometimes not too good. You have to tell your lifeguards once they're on that stand, they need to be focused, correct? Absolutely. Uh, they're not allowed to have their phones with them while they're on the stand. Uh, they have to be completely focused on what they're doing. We do give them breaks uh, to sort of break up the monotony of, of sitting on the stand. Um, but, you know, the, the, the cell phones and the, the smart watches are, are, are a major distraction for our guards and, and we just don't allow them. And you tell them that pretty much before the summer starts, right? Oh, before we hire them. Right. Yes. Now let's talk about the pools and so forth. Uh, Newport News has had the big Midtown Community mm -hmm. Center since the, the 90s. Hampton is uh, in the current construction of one where the old best location is right there in the middle of Hampton there. Right. Talk about how that progress is and what is that facility going to look like once it's done? Uh, it's going to be beautiful. Um, it's going to be um, state-of-the-art. Uh, the main pool is going to be a 50 meter, 25 yard uh, with uh, two bulkheads uh, to divide up the pool uh, for multiple different things going on at the same time. Uh, we already have uh, several national events scheduled for the facility. Uh, then adjacent to that is going to be a 25-yard eight-lane uh, recreation warm-up cool-down pool for, for big events. And then outside there's going to be a, a, a spray park, uh, water park type thing with a with a shallow area pool, a big slide, current channel, things like that. So Now will it be like uh, multi-purpose like Newport uses or primarily just aquatics? Uh, no, it's it's just going to be simply aquatics. So nobody can go there and play ping pong, for no. example. Okay, no. I gotcha. We're talking to Bob Manners, the aquatics manager for Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services for the city of Hampton, um, NNPS Telecom on YouTube as well, and of course, at Greg Bick on Twitter and YouTube too, talking to Bob Manners. And Bob, you talk about... Um, the pool safety as far as mm -hmm. even then. The pool might be smaller than the beach or the river or the lake, but you still have to stay focused on that as well. Uh, absolutely, and it's a, it's, a different, it's a different type of guarding that we do there. Um, with the open water, you can't see below the surface of the water, so you're actually having to do more of a scanning above the water. Swimming pools is uh, it's three dimensional. You have to do the entire top of the air uh, of the pool, but you also have to worry about what's going on underwater. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, you know, that's a totally different focus for, for the guards. Right. You know, you've heard disaster stories where people have pool parties and mm -hmm. you can give some advice and they let go of Johnny or Susie and all of a sudden Johnny or Susie are nowhere to be found. And that, that right. could be scary. I mean, one, one blink of the eye and uh, somebody can disappear. Absolutely. Uh, the one thing we all, well, actually two things we tell parents. One, teach your kids how to swim. 
and two, learn CPR in case right. something does happen. Right. Now, what advice would you give for the pool party? A lot of them go on during the summertime that uh, people can get distracted even more. Then that's different from, let's say, swimming laps. But even then, right. you could have heart issues, you could have health issues. The buddy system always seems to be the best. Uh, yeah, it really does. Um, so if, if you're at a pool um, where there isn't a, a lifeguard dedicated to, to guarding, make sure you have somebody who's watching you. Uh, whether it's a buddy, a parent, somebody who's, who's watching you. If you're at the beach, uh, don't go by yourself, even if there are lifeguards, because uh, there are so many people out there. Have somebody who's paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. um, parents, I, I know that, that, that it's not the, the cool thing to do, but it, if you can afford it, maybe hire somebody for your backyard pool, uh, a qualified lifeguard, uh, just to be on the safe side. Right. It doesn't matter how big the pool is either. No, absolutely. Very good. Talking to Bob Manners. And you talk about uh, some of the pools that you guys manage right now mm -hmm. and look at uh, during the summer before the big aquatic center will be open. Uh, we actually have two right now. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the Hampton Aquatic Center, and that is off of Butler Farm Road, mm -hmm. which is now off of Neil Armstrong mm -hmm. Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. um, and that pool is... Um, a great tool for us because it's a shallow pool. It, it goes from three and a half feet to six feet, so it's a fairly shallow pool uh, where we can do lessons and a lot of aerobics and things like that. Uh, we have a spa, we have a sauna, saunas uh, in the bathrooms. Uh, the other one we have is at Fort Monroe Community Center, uh, and that one, um, when we took it over from the from the military, uh, they had actually put in um, um, grab rails around the pool for therapeutics for their for their troops. Uh, which we use a lot for our uh, kids in swim lessons and for water aerobics as well. So, and, and that pool is deeper, so that's where we, we teach our lifeguarding classes. And exercise is great, and that can be good for physical and mental as well. Absolutely. Something about getting in the pool or the water feels really good on the mind and the body. It, it really does. It really does. Um, the, the number of people who, who don't even know how to swim who come in and take an exercise class with us in the water, they always feel better, and we always hear about how great they feel after the workout. Now, this is a question you're always asked, whether whatever state you've been in before, mm -hmm. you know, when you take a shower in the morning, you can adjust the water. <laughs> yeah. Now, you yes. can't adjust it in the <laughs> no. pool. It seems like that first jump, no matter how old you are, can be devastating sometimes. It, it, it can be. Why um, is that so much? Well, it, it, if, if the operator is doing their job, the air temperature in the pool area is really warm. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you, the, the person walks into the pool area, they feel that warmth. And no right. matter what the pool temperature is, it always feels colder than the, than the, than the right. air. Yeah. It's difficult. Yep. I mean, it can be, uh, and that's the thing, too, we mentioned, uh, you know, the summer, don't let the summer fool you. Okay, the calendar is June, but you can still get hypothermia, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, if, if you're wet and there's a wind blowing and it, it gets cooler, you can actually, absolutely. Yeah, especially with the wind as well. Talking to Bob Manners, aquatics manager, what have you learned from the other uh, gentlemen and ladies that have worked in the peninsula and the south side as far as y'all come together and have meetings? We do. Uh, work with um, Dan Jones in Norfolk, work with... Uh, Tommy Miller, Newport, Newport News, and uh, Tom Gill, Virginia Beach uh, Lifeguard Association. And, and we work together on doing training, not just for the pool lifeguards, but we also uh, try to get together and train our beach guards for all, so we're all working together. Now, do you guys pretty much start near the pier, and you also do parts of Fort Monroe too, correct? We, we do do uh, parts of Fort Monroe. We, start, um, we do start at the pier, uh, actually 300 feet from the pier, because that's a private area where you're mm -hmm. not allowed to swim. Uh, for obvious reasons, fish yeah. hooks and everything. And then we actually go all the way up to the private area um, of the beach at Buckrow. Yeah, and you seen, I mean, you came at a very transitional time, right before COVID, yes, and sir. as that pier was being destroyed, literally. It, yes, it was. So how was that start? Uh, that was interesting. Yeah. I, I actually started, um, my first day was in uh, April 16th, so it was, it was right as we were gearing up for the summer. And um, we, we got, um, we actually got two good years in and then COVID hit. And it was just, we weren't sure how we were gonna do it. Uh, we couldn't train our lifeguards um, properly because they couldn't come into contact with each other. Uh, we just had to do the best we could. And we muddled through, we got through, we were very, very lucky. And now that we're coming out of it, we're trying to gear back up again. Oh, we're not gonna mention the county or the city by name, but um, there is one big area here that does not have lifeguards, and that baffles me totally because so many people go across the bridge and go from one place to another. What advice would you give to any municipality in the United States that does not have lifeguards for a big body of water? 
they're they're opening themselves up for a, a major liability lawsuit. Um, we, we've we've seen numerous times where even at swimming pools where they have the signs up, no lifeguard on duty, swim at your own risk, those signs don't work. Mm -hmm. um, there, you, if you provide a, a um, an attraction um, where some where it's, you're allowing people to come in, something happens, they're going to be liable for it. Especially when you're dealing with masses of people. Absolutely. You know, even water parks too. Yes. There's several water parks in the area too, and wave pools can be very dangerous. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and they actually have special training that they do at the wave parks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Talking to Bob Banners right here, and uh, really, it's a it's a mindset you have to be in a good mind frame to be a lifeguard. And talk about some of the certification uh, qualities. Uh, well, we actually um, the the we we have American Red Cross. Uh, lifeguarding, which includes uh, CPR for the professional rescuer, AED, first aid. And then after they're hired, we add um, uh, oxygen administration and bloodborne pathogens training, which OSHA requires. Uh, and then we also do monthly in-service trainings where we make sure that their, their training is up to, up to standard. And then for the beach, we actually have to change and modify how, how we rescue because of the water conditions. So we have to do additional training for our beach staff. So. Um, that's that's basically what we do. All right, for a bit, we've all been, I've been swimming my entire life, but still we have anxiety, we've had a rough day, mentally we're not mm -hmm. right, we're in the water, it's probably not a good time to go in the water. What happens if you're drowning? Uh, basically, uh, the, the drowning victim um, does not know what they're doing. Uh, they have lost their conscious mind. All they want to do is keep their, their face out of the water so they can breathe. Uh, it's called the instinctive drowning uh, process. And uh, they will grab hold of anything and everybody that they can to keep their face out of the water. Um, so, you know, if if you encounter a drowning person uh, and you don't know what you're doing, unfortunately, the best thing I can tell you to do is stay away because mm -hmm. uh, they're going to they're going to grab you and you're going to become a victim as well. Yeah, most of us have been swimming have been saved at least once because we think we got this, but right. we don't know the undertow either. A absolutely. Uh, you know, the rip currents you have at the beaches, and, and actually at Buckrow, we don't have a, a rip current, we have a cross current. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's a totally different mindset and, and a way of, of dealing with the environment. Like Bob said, it could be rocks, it could be parameters, it could be the, the current, or it could be the undertow. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Great to be here. Very good. Bob Manners, Aquatics Manager, Parks, Recreation, and Leisure Services for the City of Hampton. Folks, we can save one life today. You can never take for granted whether you're in a pool, a beach, um, a hot tub even, you know, a lake, a river, wherever you might be, because during the summer we tend to go to all those parts mm -hmm. of the water there. So really thank you for your time and your talent today as well. And of course your safety about swimming and going to the beach and the pool. I want to thank our great guests today, Raven Blair and Bob Manners and our great crew led by Ray Price as well. This is our June edition of Sports Highlights. We'll come back to you again in August. And for the entire crew, I'm Greg McAveras. We'll talk to you soon.